Okay, so I'm here with my brand new Texas Pride low boy trailer, utility trailer. Gotta check out the stuff we've done on this one so far. First things first, I have installed two battery disconnects on the negative terminals of both batteries, just so I can avoid any type of parasitic draw draining these things. Uh, I'll probably put a solar panel on this charging just like I have on my other two Texas Pride trailers over there. I might even grab that one right there and connect it since there's no draw on it at all whenever I have these loosened now. So very, very cool. Um, got these on Amazon, but yeah, these should keep my batteries well maintained and hopefully make these things last a lot longer. Okay, and as my final precaution, I took the Duravolt panel, which I had stuck to the side right there, and I connected it right here to this battery. You know, the better way to do this would probably be off the negative here and the positive on that side. Like so. And then I can close this lid. And feed that through there like so. Make it run down like a little drip loop. And now we are hopefully maintaining the battery on here. Apologize for the wind noise. I'm just using a smartphone to record this right now. But uh I need to clean this panel off a little bit, but I think it still works. Last time I tested it, it did, which was like a week ago, so we'll see. Okay, so first time actually towing the new Texas Pride 14 foot kind of collaboration custom utility trailer. God, this thing is nice. Only had it for like a, <laughs> a day and I'm gonna put it to work, but I gotta go pick up some sod. And uh, yeah, this thing is super cool. They're gonna load it up for me, so I just gotta drop the ramps and let them bring it all in. Man, I don't know. There's something about trailers, especially when the trailer just looks nice. You know, if I had just like a cheapy trailer back here, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't care very much about it, but just look at this thing. I mean, that just looks amazing. And the fact that it's also red. I know it's not the same red, and there was a reason why I didn't want to pay extra to have it matched to my truck, because this is an incredibly expensive red. I, you know, I possibly could have had at least kind of the tone matched, but I like this bright red. I think it looks really good. What do you guys think? Oh, man, that looks super, super cool. Um, coupler. I don't really have any experience using that specific brand of coupler. It's similar to a lot of the others that I've seen. I don't know if it's auto latching. I don't think it is. We'll find out. I love the coupler that they installed on my dump trailer because it has an auto latch. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this coupler right here, I have a lock on it right now, one of my Fort Knox locks. But this coupler right here, when you lower it over the ball, it automatically opens and closes and locks. So then all you have to do is throw your pin in and then continue on with the process of hitching up, which I really like. Not that it's super needed, but what makes this really, really convenient, and a lot of folks would probably say, you know what, that's just a lazy way of doing it, but the convenient and safety factor here is the fact that you can see that it positively engages. You can see it go back and then latch back over whenever you're uh, closed over the ball. Same reason why I like, like the Reese Goose Box. It has a lever that goes up and down whenever you go over the ball. So there's no way you can really highball your coupling, which in essence means that you didn't actually couple it and this is just sitting on top. This gives you a positive you know, affirmation that you are locked to your ball, which I think is really important. And uh, one of the big reasons why I absolutely love this coupler. I may actually go hunt one down and put it on the new uh, utility trailer. But yeah, that trailer looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna go ahead and get uh, hitched up, hit the road, and start our work day off. And real quick, just in case you guys wanna know how this coupler works, you pull up on this handle while pushing down right here. You pinch the two together. And then it latches over this little lip right here. Like that. And then once you're in place, you simply hit it back like that and you're locked. So let's practice. First of all, I'm gonna reconnect my battery terminals here. Grab my remote, go ahead and lower it down.
Wow, that is, uh, <laughs> that's time saving. That is just amazing. That's awesome. That was totally worth having this. I probably need to adjust my hitch up just a hair. It's actually pretty level to be honest. About to run into a deer feeder out here. Yeah, it's pretty level. The tongue jack is probably six inches off the ground. Not looking bad at all. And then back at the coupler to lock it. That's all you have to do. And what I always do, not everyone does this I'm sure, I always feel right here underneath to make sure that it's positively engaged around the bottom lip of the ball. I always do that. Uh, you know, I've been in a situation where I let a buddy of mine hitch his trailer up one time to my truck and I glanced at it. I didn't, you know, triple inspect to make sure everything was, was proper. And that was the, f the first and only time I've ever made the mistake of uh, hitting the road and actually highballing it. And we caught it because it felt really funny when we went over a bump. And what I mean was, the bump caused the coupler to actually raise up and bounce back down. It didn't come off the back, thank the Lord. But um, yeah, you do that one time, you're never gonna wanna do it again. You know, leave a comment below. Tell me some of your accidental towing mistakes that you guys have done. You know, have you let someone else kind of take the reins to do something and you just didn't inspect it? I mean, for me now, I always triple inspect this coupling connection. You know, chains, everything else, you can just visually look at really quickly. This is the only one, I reach my finger right under here and I feel to make sure that it's locked around the bottom collar of the ball so I know it's not going anywhere. Oftentimes you can kind of visually glance down here too to see if you see any of the bottom of the ball. Typically if you do, it means you're not completely on. And the way this happens oftentimes is this piece right here may not be locked forward and it, it's essentially in the position as if it were coupled to the ball. So when you lower it on, it just rests on top of the ball. And some couplers are kind of deep and you really can't tell when it's happening. Have you ever highballed your coupling? Just let me know. I'd love to know in the comments below. You know, there's no shame. I told you guys that I've done it. 15,000 pound capacity right here. Very cool. But yeah, I'll probably swap this out with the auto coupler because again, to be able to just lower it down and watch that piece move back and then back in place, knowing that it is securely locked around the ball is really nice especially when you have you know a power front tongue jack like this because if i'm going to drop this tongue jack down as fast as it can drop down it'd be great to have the extra convenience of knowing that it's coupling every single time very cool anyways guys we're gonna hit the road because you know we have a guy cutting fresh sod for us and uh i gotta get the trailer loaded up